In this video, we're going to be discussing how to compression check your diesel engine to check for damage to the cylinders or the valves. Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be discussing how to compression check your diesel engine. This would be similar to a leak down check as well. And unlike automotive engines, gas engines that have spark plugs, diesels are particularly hard to compression check. And the reason for that is they don't have spark plugs. So it's really hard to just take that plug out, put in a little adapter and check your compression if you have a weak or dead cylinder. Now there are kits available on certain engines. OTC makes them, there's manufacturer specific ones to test for compression or a leak down check basically. This test is a little less scientific than this. Uh, this will be talking about how to just see if the cylinder holds air, see if it's leaking air out of either your intake or your exhaust valves, okay? Um, so let's get into the video. Now this CAT C13 came in with an engine miss on number five cylinder. And C13s don't lose injectors very often. Typically something else goes on, so Pull the overhead off for injectors number five and six, and I noticed that the exhaust didn't have any backlash on the rocker arm, so I suspect a valve issue, not a bad injector. You can kind of see there. I'll show you a better picture. But to do this compression check, we're gonna need to remove the injector first. So first thing you're gonna do on any diesel engine is remove the injector, and that's to get to the combustion chamber. Now, when you remove it, there's gonna be some fuel that dumps into the cylinder. So you're gonna to wanna to spray it out with a little bit of brake clean and then evac the cylinder out. So I'm just removing the hold down bolt here and then I'm gonna pop the injector out. Now it doesn't matter what type of fuel system you have. This is a electronic unit injector fuel system which is cam actuated or if you have a common rail or a Huey system, you're gonna to wanna to look at the injector tip and make sure you don't have any mechanical damage. Now you can see the fuel draining off of here. Uh, that's most of that's going to fall in the cylinder. You'll need to evac that out. So we've removed our injector. Now you can see the exhaust valves. They're the far valves. That's the one that is slightly higher than the one on the left. Now they should be the same the same height because they have a valve bridge. So what we're going to be using to test the compression in the cylinder is basically an air nozzle with a rubber tip on it. And all you need to do is this is an Amflow air nozzle is just extend it with a piece of pipe. So the injector's out. I'm now gonna see if the cylinder will hold air. So like I said before, we're gonna clean out the cylinder. I'm gonna use a little bit of brake clean here. This is also gonna help push any carbon that builds up on the bottom of the injector bore. And that will help the rubber tip seal towards the bottom of the injector bore. And then you're gonna evac that brake clean and fuel out. Now, on some of my other videos, I've used air vacuum style uh, evac tools. I've been using this hand one, which is basically just a grease gun with a handle that'll evac. Uh, it's very practical. You don't need air supply to do it. And it really does a good job of pulling any fluids out of the cylinders. So we're just gonna make sure that that cylinder's clean. You can try and get out as much as possible. And now you are ready to do your compression test. Now this, I've already removed the rocker arms. If you're on an engine that the rocker arms do not need to be removed for the injector, you should pull the push rods off. So you can see your bore there for the injector. Now we're just gonna put that rubber tipped air nozzle in there. Now getting back to why you need to remove the push rods on a different engine that has uh, rocker arms that don't need to be removed for the injectors is because you don't want anything to open the valves while you're doing this compression test for the cylinder you're gonna be checking. Now what you're gonna do is you're basically just gonna put this tool in there, hold it down, and then fill the cylinder with air. Now what you're looking for while you're doing this test is, does the cylinder hold air? Does the crankshaft rotate while filling it with air? Now, it should hold air for at least a few seconds. If it doesn't, that means there's a problem in either the cylinder itself uh, bad piston rings, you have a bad valve as far as an exhaust or intake valve, and if you can hear air leaking out somewhere. If you can hear air leaking out of your exhaust, you know you have a bad exhaust valve. If you can hear, hear air leaking out of your intake, 
then you know you have a bad intake valve. Now once you start filling the cylinder with air, you should notice the crankshaft rotating, unless the piston is already on bottom dead center. If it doesn't rotate, it might be at bottom dead center or you might have a bad cylinder. So if it doesn't rotate, you might want to rotate the engine around to a point where it's above bottom dead center and then see if it rotates. Now I suspected that we had a valve damaged here and we do because the valve height's different, but it seems that the valve is still intact. It's most likely that the seat of the valve has failed and that's why it's raised up in the cylinder. Now you want to be careful not to pull the tester off too quickly after you fill with air because there's still going to be some moisture in there that can spray in your face. So this was not going to give you a number like a traditional leak down test or compression test, but it's a good way to test any engine you're working on to see if the cylinder holds air or if you have a valve damaged. Now when you remove the head, at least on this engine, this is what you're going to find. The valve will have recessed further into the head and this is the cause of the bad cylinder, not the injector.